Welcome back. In this lesson, you'll learn about ST segment depression and T wave inversion. Every ECG student should be able to recognize and understand them. They're often associated with debilitating and potentially life threatening diseases. So pay close attention. But before we get started, I would like to give you two simple principles about the ST segment and the T wave. Principle number one says that the ST segment is located at the level of the isoelectric line. If you want to know where the isoelectric line is, just go to the segment of the ECG that comes right after the T wave and just before the next P wave. That's the level of the isoelectric line. So the ST segment should be right at that same level. If it's lower than that, as in this example over here, then that's called ST depression. Principle number two says that except in V1, the T wave is normally positive. Here you see an example of a negative T wave and in all other examples, the T waves are positive. When the T wave is negative, that's called T wave negativity or T wave inversion. Now that you know what ST depressions and T wave inversions are, what can you actually say about them that will help you come up with the right diagnosis? Well, there are two things that you can look at. You can look at the location of the ST depression or T wave inversion, and you can look at the shape. The location part is pretty straightforward. You look at the leads that have the changes in them and know what part of the heart is affected. If you still need a quick revision of where each precordial lead is located and what areas of the heart they depict, go back to level four, lesson two, and watch the video again, or browse the section in your workbook. What is it that you can assess about the actual shape of the ST depression or T wave inversion? Well, we'll return to a few very characteristic changes repeatedly. So now's the right time to familiarize yourself with them. Let's review the most important characteristic types of ST depressions and T wave inversions. Here are some examples of the most common ST depressions you will see in your patient's ECGs. This is a normal ECG with no ST depression for comparison. Let's look at example A. This is what we call a descending ST depression. It's a problem of repolarization usually seen in ventricular hypertrophy. You've already seen a little bit of it in the previous examples, and we'll see more of it as we progress. Let's look at example B. This is called ST depression with a sagging morphology. This ST depression looks like a ditch or like a trench. This type of problem may be caused by digoxin, hypokalemia, or coronary artery disease. Moving on to example C. Now this is a classical form of ST depression. It's a horizontal type of ST depression. This is typically seen in patients with coronary artery disease. This is the mother of all ST depressions and it's very specific for coronary problems. In example D, you see an ascending form of ST depression, which may be caused by high sympathetic tone, but also by physical activity and coronary heart disease. This ascending ST depression when it occurs during exercise has a very low specificity for myocardial ischemia. In example E, we see a very severe form of ST depression that's usually seen in neighboring precordial leads in the setting of severe ischemia. Let's review when you might see these morphologies. Descending ST depression is most often seen in ventricular hypertrophy, and it's a form of repolarization problem. ST depression with a sagging morphology is most often seen in digoxin ingestion, hypokalemia, or coronary artery disease. Horizontal ST depression is very characteristic of angina and coronary heart disease. An ascending form of ST depression is most often seen in high sympathetic tone or during exercise. This is very unspecific for coronary artery disease. Finally, a very, very deep ST depression is commonly seen in severe ischemia. Now let's turn to T wave negativity or T wave inversion. Here are the most important examples of T wave patterns that can be found. 
On the far left side, you have a normal T wave for comparison. The other four patterns are negative and therefore abnormal. The first important distinction that I want you to notice here is this. The T waves in example A and B are asymmetric. The descending part looks different than the ascending part. Example C and D, on the other hand, are symmetric. The descending part is symmetric to the ascending part. It's like a mirror image of the ascending part. So why is that important? Well, because these changes occur in two distinct settings with hugely different implications. Asymmetric changes usually occur in the setting of ventricular hypertrophy. When they're located over the left ventricle, that means left ventricular hypertrophy is probably present. When they're located over the right ventricle, then that means that right ventricular hypertrophy is likely present. You can use the hypertrophy criteria that we've learned previously to confirm and validate that assessment. When the T waves are negative and symmetric, that's usually a sign that myocardial cells are dying off. Most of the time, we see these symmetric T wave inversions in the setting of myocardial ischemia. However, this can also occur in myocarditis. One more thing, it's important to know that these ST or T wave changes can also occur in the setting of an intraventricular conduction delay, like in bundle branch block, premature ventricular beats, or the Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. So it's important to know that when the QRS complex is broadened, the ST segment or T wave can be negative. Now let's get our hands on some real life ECGs. Let's turn to the exercises. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.